welcome back to Build It Motorsport. Uh, today we're having our third video about things people don't always understand when racing. So uh, this is going to be part number three, the final part uh, of the three. The first one was about power to weight ratio. Uh, if you ha didn't go watch that video, it's very self-explanatory um, on the power to weight ratio, but I went ahead and included it as the first video. So if you want to go back and watch it, I'm going to leave the link right here. And then the second part was about gearing and gear ratios and how uh, power isn't everything. Power isn't everything with acceleration and racing. Uh, your gear ratios and your transmission and, uh, and your tire size all play a big part in how fast you go regardless of the weight or the power that you're making. So if you guys want to go back and watch that video, that one is definitely informative. Uh, and I tried to explain that very well so I would definitely if you haven't seen that video I would encourage you to go back and watch it and I'll leave the link to that one right here all right so uh, this last video is gonna be about DA you may have heard that term used uh, with people when they're racing say hey what's the DA you know what's what's the weather basically is what they're saying what's the air like uh, DA stands for density altitude so uh, when someone is talking about DA, they mean density altitude. Density altitude is essentially the air quality. How, how good or bad the air quality is that is going to be going into your intake and going through your engine. So um, now, there are, first I'm going to explain uh, how, what, how exactly DA works, how exactly we get that number of DA and then I'm gonna go through after that uh, why it's important why DA is important and how we can apply it to uh, ourselves and how we can apply it to ourselves comparing to other people and our previous times so DA density altitude has to do with the density of the air and the way we're gonna measure the density of the air is in altitude so DA could be zero, DA could be 3,000, DA can be any number below, above, uh, zero. Um, you can actually have DA that is below zero. You can also have DA that is higher than any altitude that you can actually be on uh, physically uh, in the United States. Like, we're in the United States. I don't know what the highest elevation is, but you can actually have a DA that is higher than that, even though your elevation is a certain amount. So um, the way DA ha is calculated, uh, there is a certain amount of of conditions that will affect the density of the air. One of those is temperature. That's the main and most important one. Temperature. The hotter it is the less dense it's going to be, so the higher DA. Also, altitude itself, the actual altitude you are at, the elevation you are at above sea level or below sea level will affect you. The lower the elevation, the better. The higher the elevation, the less dense the air will be. So there'll be less air packed in to that, 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 that DA level. Uh, so elevation, that's going to affect you. Temperature, that's going to affect you. And another thing that is one of the many things, but another thing is humidity. So I'm here in Arkansas. Uh, it gets very, very, very humid here. It also can be very, very hot here in the summer. Um, it does cool off, but the humidity is always kind of there. Uh, humidity doesn't have as big of an effect as temperature does, but essentially... The more humid it is, that's that moisture that's in the air is taking the place of the actual oxygen that could be in the air. Um, so those are the three things that are going to affect your DA. That's elevation, the temperature, and then the humidity or the moisture in the air. Uh, all of these things can affect you. Uh, so well, I'm going to repeat. The higher the elevation, the less dense. The higher the temperature, the less dense. The higher the humidity, the less dense. 
So the higher those numbers are, the higher your DA is going to be, and the higher your DA is, the worse that your air quality is, basically. There's less power that you're going to be able to make in a higher DA. So how they figure the DA uh, is basically what they do is they had they decided, and I don't know who they is, but there's a standardized set of atmospheric conditions. Uh, by that I mean there's uh, a standardized set of atmospheric conditions. So the temperature, they, they, they just decided on a temperature and then there's a humidity. They just decided on a humidity. Then there is also barometric pressure. Uh, barometric pressure has a lot to do with the elevation you're at, but it can also have a lot to do with the weather activity. Uh, right before a storm, uh, you know, there could be high or low pressure, stuff like that. So it just is the air pressure itself. So they took those different parameters and they said, okay, we're going to make a standardized set of these atmospheric conditions and they're gonna basically take those and they're going to they're, take those and have them measured at that at that level so at zero feet of elevation above sea level at, at sea level which is zero elevation they have those standard set of atmospheric conditions that's called zero DA then at we'll say 2,000 feet above sea level they have they they take that number and have those atmospheric conditions those standardized set of atmospheric conditions and they call that 2000 DA so basically they just said okay disregarding all of these atmospheric conditions and setting them all the same whatever elevation you're at that'll be that DA so now that's that is basically just a unit of measure DA is just a unit of measure of the air quality and they just took those standard conditions and set them level across all elevations and then said hey this elevation with these atmospheric conditions is this DA well okay so once they did that they had something to measure it with they had a way to measure the air quality you have to excuse the Sun you guys uh, but they took those and that's how they made the measure of air quality of DA then they go, okay, now we can introduce these variables back into it. What's the actual atmospheric conditions? What's the actual temperature? What's the actual humidity? What's the actual barometric pressure? Okay, what is the elevation that you're at? Okay, we're going to figure all of those into the equation, and we're going to give you the DA that it is as if you were at a certain height at the standard conditions. Um, that may be kind of confusing, but uh, I'm hoping that you guys are understanding it. So that's just a measure. So let's say I'm at roughly, I don't know where we're at here, probably somewhere in the ballpark of 200 or 2,000 to 3,000 feet above sea level here, uh, where I'm at in Arkansas uh, on the Ozark Plateau. So they, uh, they take those atmospheric conditions at this elevation and they say it's really hot, uh, which it is, it's summer. It's also very humid. It will be higher ele uh, DA than the elevation that we're at. Um, I think today uh, I saw that the DA was somewhere in the 4,000 to 5,000 DA range. Well, if we're only at 200, or uh, excuse me, two th if we're only at 2,000 feet above sea level, how can our DA be? 5,000. Well, it's because those atmospheric conditions are higher, they're worse than the standardized set that they use to come up with that measure. So, therefore, it may only be 2,000 feet above sea level here, but it's so hot and so humid that it may as well be the same thing as being at 5,000 feet above sea level, but with better conditions. So that can happen. It can also be uh, your DA can also be lower than the elevation you're at because the conditions that you're experiencing there could be better than those standardized sets that they used to come up with the number of DA. So uh, that's just something to, to, to go off of. DA just tells you how good your air quality is given uh, all of the atmospheric conditions and your elevation compared to actual elevation with, at meeting a certain set of 
normal atmospheric conditions. So a lot of big words there, guys, but that's that's DA. That's really what DA is. And so you can have lower or higher. You can be at, you know, you can see negative DA. You can be, uh, I actually, last year when I went racing, uh, had a lot of other issues uh, besides the fact, but the DA that night was uh, roughly 200 DA. We were easily a thousand feet above sea level, level or more, but it was so cold and such so low humidity that it was able to drop that number down uh, to lower than the, the elevation we were seeing. So DA is very important, that's the air quality. Now, another thing I wanna go into is what exactly the density of the air is. People will tell you, well, DA is the density of the oxygen in the air. That's only partially true. DA is a measure of the density of the air. It's density altitude is what DA stands for, but it is a measurement of the density of the air. So uh, the reason that it doesn't exactly mean only oxygen is because oxygen only makes up roughly 20% of the uh, air. That is, that is in the air. I mean, that 20% of the air is made up of oxygen. And then about, I think it's 78% of the uh, air is made up of nitrogen. Then there's like a two or 3% in there, whatever it is, that's just some random gases that are in the air uh, that aren't really important. So your engine is combining oxygen and fuel uh, be it ethanol, be it gasoline, be it diesel, uh, it may be nitro because you have a nitro drag car, it could be a lot of things. Uh, but the fuel and the oxygen are what is burning. Now, if you just burned it, then yeah, you'd get an explosion, but what, what the pressure, what, what makes the pressure is you're heating up that extra uh, those extra things that are in the air, like the nitrogen, you're heating it up. So when you burn that oxygen and fuel, you're heating up the nitrogen that is in the air and it is making it expand. Because when things get hot, they expand. And that expansion is forcing your piston down and, or if you have a rotary, <laughs> forcing your rotor around. And, uh, but it's making the force that is moving and making the torque which makes which turns your engine which depending on your rpm makes horsepower these are all things to keep in mind but remember it's not just oxygen oxygen is just what you have that is being burned the nitrogen in the air is being expanded and it's forcing your piston down because it's getting hot from the burn so uh that's a little bit of science for you guys hope that explained da uh the next thing i want to get into is what DA really means for you, what that number really is gonna mean in real life. Uh, the better the DA is, then the better uh, your density of the air is, which means your engine's gonna get more power. Well, if you have one night you go racing and it's got a bad DA, and then look, we'll say, a, we'll say it's 5,000 DA, it's real hot and humid. You go racing and it's really high DA, like 5,000. Then on another night, Later in the year, it's cooler, or earlier in the year, it's cooler, and you go racing, and it's, say, a 100 DA. You're going to, with the same mods, same everything, you're going to have more power available to your engine with that lower DA number. So when you're comparing your time slips, when you're comparing with other people's time slips, you need to keep the DA in mind, because you may you may go faster than somebody else in the same DA, but they're trying to compare their numbers in better DA to your worst DA numbers, and they're going, oh, well, you're slow. Well, if I go, you know, a tenth slower than you, but I'm in 2000 DA and you're in negative 200 DA, then chances are that you're not actually faster in the same conditions. If you're on the track the same day, that guy's probably gonna go slower. Okay, so uh, that's just a good thing for comparison. So when someone tries to compare their DA uh, 
or I'm sorry, when someone tries to compare their times with your times, keep the DA in mind. It's gonna make a difference on an apples to apples comparison. So uh, that's really what DA is for. It's to tell you uh, how good the air is so you can adjust your tune if you're having spinning problems or whatever it may be. And then it's also so you can make an apples to apples comparison with someone else or yourself uh, previously so you can make the apples to apples comparison and say, hey, in the same weather, uh, we did this. In different weather, we did this. And there are calculators uh, that you can go to to m correct for that and say, okay, well, you were in this DA, I was in this DA, but if we go and punch in these numbers and uh, drag times calculators, there's lots of uh, good calculators on drag times, uh, and, and that's a internet deal. You can go on there and there's a calculator. You can enter your time in your certain DA that you are in and then see, hey, what would I be at this DA? Uh, what would I be at sea level? And it will correct your time and it's fairly accurate. Um, and you can say, okay, well, you were in 200 DA, I was in 2000 DA, here's our times. Let's correct those and put them both to what they would have been at atmospheric uh, zero DA and say, okay, well, look, this is where we sit. And you can compare those things. So, uh, all right, guys, well, I hope that's been informative. I hope you guys learned something. Um, that's, that's definitely something that people definitely don't always understand, something that people very often forget. Uh, whenever they're comparing their times with yours and whenever you or your, someone else is comparing the time at one point to a time in another point you know different DAs was gonna affect you so uh, guys we're gonna be moving forward with the channel uh, I hope you uh, like this little series I did if you like those please give it a thumbs up uh, it really helps get this information out to other people so they'll see it uh, and if you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe. And if you have any questions, leave a comment. Uh, leave a question in the comments, and I will get back to you. I 100% get back to you uh, if you ask me a question in the comments. So um, moving forward, you guys, with the channel, those of you who are subscribed, those of you who are about to subscribe and keep following, um, we're going to take the battle wagon. We're sitting in right now. It's a big old heavy truck. We're going to do some shows, but we're going to be moving forward. I got HP tuners. Uh, I'm gonna do an unboxing. It's actually in the back seat. Uh, the box is in the back seat. The next video will be an unboxing of HP tuners, and then uh, a little bit later on we'll do the Pro Link. And uh, but we'll go ahead and talk about the Pro Link in the next video and why it is so important for tuning. Um, but yeah, HP tuners. It's gonna be awesome, uh, and I got some good things that are gonna come out of it because there's a lot more we can do uh, once I get a good quality tuning software to work with. Because uh, the Diablo just it's good, it's good, but it's just not cutting anymore. Having trouble logging the wideband. So going to HP Tuners and I think it's gonna be great. So guys, stay tuned and thank you for watching Build It Motorsport.